Hey, good morning and welcome. We're so glad you're here. I'm today's host. My name is Mickey and this is Kenny, our lead pastor. Hi there. Hey, whether you're still in your pajamas, maybe you're grabbing that second cup of coffee, we're so glad that you logged on to be with us today. Yes, we are. And we know this is tough times, but hey, we're going to sing a few songs together. And that's how we usually get started around here. So if you want to sing along with us and pay attention, especially to the words. It's, it's really just nice to let, it, let them soak in and, and see what God will do through it. So welcome. Thanks for joining us.
Welcome back. These are tough times for us, and I know it's hitting all of us a little bit differently. And uh, Mick, I know it's hit, I know it hits you. How are, how are you holding up through all this? You know, for the most part, I'm doing well. It's um, it's difficult. It's totally changed routines, and it's tough not being around people. I never realized how much I would miss personal interaction. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, um, same. Uh, we we have a little bit more of a house full um, right now uh, with, with a couple of kids being home, but um, that's really great. But yeah, it's hard. I, I really miss our small group. I, I miss everybody on a Sunday morning. And, and I know this week has been a really especially hard because um, this COVID-19, I mean, it's affecting us whether we realize it or not, but it hit hard this week. We, we lost one of our own who uh, passed away because of COVID-19. And, um, and it just, you know, wow, it, it hits. It really does hit. And I know a lot of people are, are grieving with this. And, and so we know where you're at. We know what you're struggling with. And um, 
and, and so just, you know, as, as we saw, you know, cast your anxieties on him, you know, because he, he does care. Could all use some peace. Yeah, we could all use the peace, definitely. Yeah. Okay, would you pray? Yeah, yeah, let's pray. Um, Father, we are just grateful that you are God. And this is a tough time. This is really tough. And so we ask for your grace. We ask for patience. Because I, I know some of us are getting a little more anxious than we should. So forgive us for that. And Lord, help us to, to just rely on you. Help us to turn to you. And Lord, is there some that are even joining with us this morning? You know, you're new to them. And, and trying to understand you and trying to figure out um, what it means to pray, what it means to cast their anxieties upon you. So, um, Lord, we just ask that you interact in their lives and that we could be a resource here. We could be a help. We could be praying for people. And, Lord, we can help guide others to help find your son, Jesus Christ. So, um, so Lord, we, just, we, get, we give our morning to you. We, get, we give our lives to you. And we just want to see you do great things through us. So thanks for being in our midst today with us. And Lord, we pray for those who are really struggling, those who have lost someone very dear, very close to them through this, that you will be a strength to them. You will be a guide. And Lord, they will find what it means to really rely on you, to really transfer their fears and anxiety to you and let you carry that. So Lord, we do that right now as we as we move along together in our time together. And so, Lord, we pray these things through the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So I, um, we're, we're in the midst of a series, and uh, I, I, don't, I don't know if uh, we could have found a better series, and it originated from North Point Ministries um, 10 years ago, and I don't know if you knew this, but it, the series actually originated after 9-11. And so we've been reworking it and stuff like this, but um, I, know, I know it's hitting me hard just even preparing for it and working through it. But I, I don't know if you're if it's helping you at all as we. You know, it couldn't have come at a better time. It's um, you know one of my prayers and my hopes is that there's another awakening, and more people come to God and come to Christ. So thank you for this yeah, message. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely. Great. So so we continue our series with you. Thanks for joining us. You know what I like to do? I like to drive. Now, I don't mean just drive for sake of driving. I like to drive where you get lost. Now, it probably started when I was a kid. I used to like to ride my bike around. And so I'd be riding, and I'd see a road that I didn't know where it went to. And so I'd take that road and see where it ended up. And that was cool. I, I liked doing that, you know? And now you have to do this without a GPS. You have to do it without, you know, Google Maps or Waze or anything like that. And what it helps you to do is it helps you to figure out things. Now, you have to know some of the basics. You have to know where, you know, the sun, it, it rises in the east and it sets in the west. Okay, there's helpful information. So you get a bigger picture. It's a lot easier when you're driving in a car because you have a gas and hopefully you have a full tank of gas. So in case you get lost, you, know, you, got some, you got some leeway there, okay? Now, some of you will probably think I'm crazy, you know, because you get lost going to the bathroom in the middle of the night, okay? But no matter how good you are at directions, no matter how good you are at navigating things, sometimes, and I, and I, know, I know this is true of everybody, okay? This is true of everybody, that we all face times of uncertainty. We all face those times where we're not sure. We're not sure what to do. We're not sure how to get through this. We're not sure, should I choose this school or that school? Do I choose to, well, should we put the house on the market? 
Or maybe we should stay where we're at. Should we move to another state? Should we move closer to family? Should I look for a new job or should I just be satisfied where I am? Or should I look for a new job within my company? Or how do we pay that bill when there's not enough money? How do we face the challenges with our child and how do we guide them as a parent to... How do we navigate the future with our parents? Because maybe they're getting older. How do we get through this sickness or, or even a death? Sometimes during the great uncertainties, we struggle. There's that fear, there's that insecurity, and we're all going to. Now, you may be okay. And your worst thing you're going through is, is maybe you're just gaining a little extra weight because you're working from home instead of going to the office. But for a lot of people right now, there's an uncertainty. We're unsure. But you know what? Uncertainty is God's favorite environment. It's when he gets our intention. It's, it's when he connects to an individual because, you know what? We need to. It's when he gets the attention of families or companies or, or now even countries or even the world. It's when he accomplishes the most. It's when some realize that, you know what, I'm doing some things wrong. Where some get their values reshuffled, maybe intentionally or maybe not intentionally. It's when people who didn't pray all of a sudden are like, you know what, I got to try something because I feel like I'm out of control. Somehow we, we find this dependency on something that we, we didn't before because we, we thought we were secure. It's times like these that maybe you found your faith or maybe you returned after a long time of, of walking away from your faith. It's times of uncertainty when we ask the questions like, is God still there? I mean, is he? You know, because maybe you once believed, maybe somewhere along the line you, you just didn't. And, and you don't know where it was. You don't know if it was here or maybe it was back then, but, but somewhere along the line you just didn't. You just stopped following. But this is really tough. And this is a time where you're really starting to question things and you're wondering, is, is God still there? And you're wondering, does God interact with us? I mean, if he is there, does he still involve himself in our lives? You know, maybe you believe he started this whole thing, and that's fine. You know, he jump-started it, however you believe that. But, but now, now you're wondering, is God involved in humanity? Does he care? Can he do something? And then, then sometimes it gets more personal. You know, does God care about me? I mean, there's a big world, and, and there's so many problems, and there's a lot of people who are worse off than I am, maybe. But if he is all-powerful, if he is compassionate and loving, does he look and does he care about me? And in those who see God at work, this is what changed you. This is what connected you in that moment when you saw that God did something, and you're different now. You see, here's the thing, those Bible stories, you know, maybe you, you grew up in a church or maybe you've heard the stories, you know, those stories that we loved as a kid were stories where there was uncertainty, where people faced all odds and they saw God do something that was unbelievable and they believed. And we want to believe that God is still working and if God is still working, does he care about me? Now, last week we looked at this verse. And Paul, Paul's the one who wrote this. We're going to talk about Paul a little bit later. But Paul said this, and he challenges it. And we know that in all things, that in all things, when, when money is tight, when you lost your job, when you can't find a new one, when you, when you got sick or when you still are sick or, or when you're not sure how it's going to impact your life, when she walked out or when he broke it off, or you don't know where your kid is, or, or even in all the mess or all our mistakes, that God works for the good. He works for the good of those who love him 
who have been called according to his purpose. And what many have discovered is that God does still care. God does still love us. And God is still involved in our lives and he still works in our individual lives, even when it doesn't make sense. This week, the band got together. And I know a lot of them practice at home and they came together and obviously we're trying to separate so we're not close, trying to observe our social distancing and all that. But they all came together and they worked hard all, all night long. <laughs> really. Um, I think we're here for five hours, some of us, maybe longer. And, and it didn't work. And the worst thing is it, it, it was a simple thing, okay? And, and me, I, you know, I, I, can, I can try to analyze and I can get upset at, you know, if, if only somebody did this or somebody should have done this and all this stuff. And as I started just looking at that, you know, I, I started realizing there was probably 20 different decisions that were all infected, it, it affected that, that, that thing. It, it really did. And, and, and seven different people were connected with it. And that's just what I started to come up with. I was like, oh my goodness, do you know how many pieces all came together? But do you know what it was? One little thing that still can't be explained happened that triggered a series of events. And so the sound didn't work right. And now it's fixed. But you wonder, what, what was... <laughs> God, why? Like, why all that investment of time and energy? And, and God, what is your plan in all this? But here's the thing. Somehow, and I don't understand it, and I don't know about you, and maybe if you're, if you're on a band, you're like, what happened? You know, but God has a plan in that because God always works for the good of those who love him. And somehow he's always going to bring it together for something better. You see, what Scripture teaches us is that why we keep going and, and why we have to keep going there. We have to, have to. We have to go back to Scripture. Is that in times of uncertainty is when God does his greatest work. Now, I know what you're thinking. And that's the question we're going to ask today. What are we supposed to do while we wait? While we're waiting for God to answer prayer. And if you're like me, even a little bit, okay, we want to fix it now. We want God to do something now. So while we wait to see if our job will still be there, while we wait sometimes when money is dwindling in our savings or in our retirement and our 401k or whatever it is, or while we wait while we're still getting sicker, or while we wait with more and more uncertainty, or maybe we feel like we're going in the wrong direction, we're not sure and we're praying, God, is this the right direction? And the longer we wait, the worse off or the further we're going to get away from where we think we may have to shift to and we're wondering, God, where are you? Or maybe you're feeling alone and it's getting lonelier. While we wait, God has an answer. And the great news is, is today what we're going to do is, is look at a scripture passage that gives us the answer to what do we do while we wait. So if you have a Bible, I want you to turn to Philippians 4.4. Now, one of the neat things about our online platform is you can just click on that little tab and it, you can just find Philippians 4.4. It's that easy. So that's really cool. And I hope you're doing that or maybe you can look, make some notes as you're going along. But so Philippians 4, this is what's happening. Paul is writing a letter. And Paul, is, he's, an, he's an evangelist. He went out and started churches. And he, he, he's writing to the local church because at the center of God's mission that he gave the church, okay, is the local church. And Paul's this guy who planted all these churches. And it's an amazing story how Paul came to faith, okay? But, but he starts these churches and he writes these letters. And what he's doing is he's writing these letters to churches that are going through some tough times like right now. And so he's writing to people just like you and me. And he's, he's writing to encourage the Kales to keep going. And listen to what he writes. Rejoice in the Lord always. And you're like, figures... I mean, I mean, what do you expect from a preacher guy, right? I mean, what do you think he's going to say? And I know you probably got some, maybe some churchy friends that you're like, ah, that's what they say, you know, just rejoice in the Lord, you know. It's all good, you know, the world's ending and collapsing around you, you know. And maybe that's why some of you walked away. 
because you felt like the church was out of touch. You felt like somebody just said something that was, you know, some patent answer. Oh, God will take care of it, our kind of stuff, you know? And you don't understand, and you figured maybe God doesn't understand too. Now, you love what Paul writes next. <laughs> he says this, I'll say it again. <laughs> Rejoice. And you're like, what? And Paul's like, just in case you missed this, and he's not saying ignore the bad. He's not saying forget the pain, forget the struggles. Notice where his emphasis is. It's in. In what? In, in the Lord. The best way to understand this is if you substitute the word Lord for something else. Like rejoice in that new baby you just had. Or that new grandchild. Or new niece or nephew. Rejoice in the fact that maybe you just got married or, or maybe you just got a raise or you just got your check in the mail, you know, and, and you're excited. Rejoice that you got accepted in the college. Rejoice you got a new car, you know. Now, the reason it's so hard for us to focus on God is because God has blessed us so much and we have so much to rejoice in. And so when something happens like this, and all of a sudden, we lose our job. All of a sudden, money gets tight. All of a sudden, we get sick or we face a loss, even a death. We are at a loss. And we, we feel this huge weight and this huge impact because we have been rejoicing in these things and not the Lord. And so Paul is saying is, I, I, I know how tough it is. And I, I know what I want you to do is I want you to redirect your emotions I want you to take your emotions that, that's, that's tearing you apart right now, and I want you to take that, and I want you to focus it on God while the rest of you just catches up. This is why we sing. This is why when we gather together on a Sunday morning or, or maybe a Saturday night, some of you know, you gather and we sing, and, and we just sing praises to God. And maybe you did that this morning in your living room, you know. Maybe you're just singing loud, and maybe your spouse is hoping you wouldn't sing so loud. But you know what? You're just excited. Why? Because you're rejoicing in the Lord. And for a moment, for a time, you're just putting aside the things that are really struggling in your life, and you're just rejoicing in the Lord. This is why we cheer at baptism. This is why we get so excited when, when someone publicly declares, I've given my life to Jesus Christ. I'm a follower of Christ. And we all celebrate that, you know? And then Paul says this. He says, let your gentleness be evident to all. You see, because what happens is character shows up under stress. Are you angry? Do you get upset? Do you, do you pull away? Do you blame? And some of you are like, yes, yes, and yes, definitely, you know. And we're seeing that now in our, in our culture. We're seeing that across the world. You're seeing leaders who who their character is being revealed in this stressful time. And you see those who blame and those who don't blame, those who take ownership and, and say, no, this is, it's, it's my fault, you know, this happened, whatever. The best way to understand this is, is, is the gentleness is, is the idea of giving way generously. That you are letting go in a sense of, this is not entitlement. This is the exact opposite. This is, <laughs> this is not I deserve or I should get. It, it's not fair. It's none of that. This is totally different. And you're probably like, Paul, you just don't understand. Paul, you have no idea what we're going through right now. Your world is a different time, a different era. You have no idea how much this is impacting the entire world. I mean, we're losing things. We're losing people. We're losing people close to us. And Paul, well, he could easily say, he probably wouldn't, but he says, I, I do know. I do know. Let me tell you a little bit more about Paul. Paul was a Jewish leader. So he was pretty well off. He was very honored, respected. And he persecuted these followers of this Jesus guy until he became one. And that caused a problem. And so he became an outcast among those who were probably family, among colleagues. And what he did is he set out, and there's a, more of a backstory there, but, but basically he set out and he started planting churches. And he went to the Gentiles. These are those who are not Jewish people. And he went to what we now know as, as Europe. And one of the first churches he planted was a church in Philippi. The letter that we're reading right now, thousands of years later. Isn't that cool? 
And so here you have this Jewish guy, and he's going to a Hellenistic Greek culture, and he's trying to convince them to leave all their stuff, all their superstitions, all their other gods that they're following, and start following this guy, Jesus. Now, they don't have to become Jewish. He's not trying to make them convert to Judaism or anything like that, so they don't have to follow any rituals. They don't have to follow you know, certain dietary laws and restrictions. They don't have to get circumcised. The guys are all excited about that. But, but what he's saying is, I want you to follow this guy, Jesus. Can you imagine trying to convince a culture like that? And yet he does. Now, after time, he's, he's, he started these churches, and, and he's, he's teaching people, look, it's all about Jesus, okay? It's not about some religion or anything like that. It's all about Jesus, what he did. That Jesus Christ came, he died so that we can have life, and he rose from the dead. And what he was sharing is what he heard, what he saw, he's sharing that with others. Eventually, Paul ends up back in Jerusalem, and there he's arrested, because the Jewish leaders, they hate him, okay? And what happens is they arrest him, but um, there's a little problem. He's a Roman citizen. He had had Roman citizenships. And what that did is that put him in a whole other level. And so Paul could not be tried by the Jewish leaders. He had to go to Rome. And so Paul understands he now has to go to Rome and he has to face Nero, literally. So they send him on a ship to Rome. And on the way to Rome, his ship is literally lost in a storm for two weeks. They're gone. They eventually shipwreck. And they're shipwrecked now for three months. And all this time, Paul is chained. He's a prisoner. Finally, they get to a place where he's now, he's in jail. Basically, he waits. He's waiting to go before his, for his trial before Nero. And during that time, while he's in jail, while he's in prison, he writes letters. What else do you do with free time, right? So he writes letters. When we are faced with challenge, we want something to happen now, don't we? I know I do. And the scripture is filled with people who, who were anxious, just like you and me, for things to happen. But what they did is they learned to wait on God. And they learned that God has this bigger plan. And that's what happened to Paul. Paul learned that even though he was on his great journey that now took years and years, and even though he was suffering and struggling, that God had a bigger plan. Because the letter you and I are writing, we would not be reading now the letter that Paul wrote, unless Paul went through all this. You see, when, when we don't let God do his stuff, when we try to force God's hands, it gets worse. And you see that in Scripture time and time and time again. Event after event after event where people say, no, I, I think I can fix this. I think I can make it happen. And then it gets worse. And some of those consequences that happened thousands and thousands of years ago, we are still paying for as a culture. That's crazy. Do you know why Judas betrayed Jesus? Because Jesus wasn't moving fast enough. Judas had his, his ideas and he had his plan of, of how the, the whole Roman Empire was going to fall, you know, and how Judaism was going to rise up and Jesus was going to be their king and, and Jesus wasn't moving fast enough. And you've tried and, and I've tried. And we try to finagle things, you know, if I just do this, 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 is a, then I probably will get that promotion, you know, and that doesn't happen or it gets worse, you know. And you know you should have waited, you know maybe you should have not rushed into this, but you didn't. And now you're married to him or you're married to her. And we try to force God's hand. And what Paul is saying to you and me, he's saying, don't let something you can't control control you. And tough times reveal our character and how we respond. And this is why he says, let your gentleness be evident to all. You see, our hope is not in, in, it's not in things and it's not even in people. It's not that they aren't good. It's not that God doesn't bless us through that. But he wants us to have our hope sourced in the Lord. Because while we wait, we learn to know and to trust that God is at work. And he's working to accomplish his plan, not ours. And when people look at you and when they look at me, Paul wants them to see the gentleness. He wants them to see Jesus. And then Paul reminds us this. He says, the Lord is near. Like in the midst of all the panic, when things are out of control, God is near. He is right there. He has not left you. You're not alone. 
He is sitting right next to you. He's standing right next to you. He has it in control. And so Paul says, do not be anxious about anything. And I know, because if you're struggling right now, you're hearing this and you're like, seriously? That's your advice? Just don't be anxious? I mean, like, don't worry, be happy. Let's just all sing the song together and I'll be great, you know? This is where we want to give up. This is where we want to shut the book. This is where we want to rip up this letter of Paul and say, look, you just don't understand. But see, this is where he starts to give the, the how-to tips. And so he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. So he goes on. He says, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. While you are waiting, Pray. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And that's what Paul goes on and does as he goes on in that verse. He tells us to pray. Pray. Now, the interesting thing about prayer in this is is Paul uses three words. I mean, he says the word prayer, but he also uses the word petition, and he also uses the word present. These are three different words for prayer. The first one is more of a general look. The second one is, is a little bit more specific, okay? And then the third one, this is like really detailed, okay? So what Paul is doing is saying, just pray, okay? Pray the detail stuff, okay? pray the, the more bigger picture stuff, then pray more specifically. But what he really wants to focus on is this petition. Now, the English is sometimes hard to grasp. The meaning that is translated into English, we, we lose some things. So the word present, okay, is not strong enough. So, so let, me, let me share a little bit more. The, the word in the mix is this word norizo, okay? And, and the word is associated with the idea of revealing a mystery, something that's not known that now is brought to light. Another way to say this in the English is, is let your requests be made known. That your request is revealing a mystery, something about you, something about yourself. So why you're anxious when you're feeling angry, when you're feeling fear, when you're feeling withdrawal or you are withdrawing, okay, that this is all about discovering yourself. You know, there's a lot of talk about self-care today. And we like that. That sounds great. You know, let me get some rest. Let me lounge out. Let me get the massage. You know, for you ladies, like give me the facial, you know, all that kind of stuff. In a spiritual journey, self-care is all about self-discovery. We're discovering what we fear, what we're struggling with. And Paul here is saying, why are you anxious? What is really causing that anxiety? What is calling you, causing you to pull away from others so that you don't have to face it? What is, what is causing you to, to get upset, to, to snap? When we can't get to that place, what Paul is challenging us to do is, is to, to, to dig deep inside, to find that mystery, because it's that mystery that will release the peace of God. And the peace of God, Paul says. Now, Paul's in prison writing this, right? And he could have said, you know, just get me out of here, God. And, but he says this, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding. When it doesn't make sense, in the midst of the storm, you are at peace. And this is what's so important. It will guard, this will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. It guards us against anxiety it's a peace that God can bring because, because now you know you better. It's a spirit, it's the spirit of God that, that works through our prayers to reveal what's really going on inside of us. And I know, I, I've experienced that, and I know maybe you have too, or I hope you will, that God brings to light something that you didn't know, and it's in the midst, it's inside there. And when we share the things that we need through our prayer, Sometimes God intervenes. 
Now, I wish he would do it all the time. I know you probably do too. But sometimes he does, and sometimes money comes in. And sometimes our marriage does get fixed, even though it's so broken. It probably takes a great counselor. It takes a lot of God's grace. But sometimes our son or daughter does come home. Sometimes the house does sell when it seems impossible. Or a new job comes along. We just didn't expect it at the right moment. Sometimes the addictions do end. And God intervenes in an amazing way. But it does not mean that we don't work hard. One of our core values at, at North Point is this, that pray like it depends on God, but work like it depends on you. In other words, do all you possibly can. Work hard with the gifts that God has given you. Do your very best. Push it. Give it all for God, no matter what you're doing in life. Seek help, seek advice, seek coaching, and follow through with it. Be as faithful with his kingdom as you are with yours. Fight and work hard for his kingdom as much as you do for yours. Why? Because God's a God of rewards. It's what he does. But don't substitute for trusting God, okay? Place into God's hand what is only God is capable of handling. In other words, we, we pray until peace comes. That's what Paul's challenging us on. Just pray. Transfer your joy in what you see in God. Now, this, this prayer is not so easy, is it? To get to peace, we have to let go. We have to, we have to dig inside. The Spirit of God is going to have to help reveal things to expose this mystery inside. So why don't you try it like this? When you're taking time to pray, just say it like this. Heavenly Father, or call him God. Call what it, I need this. Now, God already knows. We know that. But he wants us to share it. I need this. And I'm afraid that if I don't, this will happen. In other words, what are you afraid of? Maybe it's losing something. Maybe it's not gaining something. Maybe it's, maybe it's a change, and you don't like change. And God wants to move and change something. And, and so tell him, I'm afraid to change. And God will reveal, if we let him, what's inside. He'll reveal that mystery. Now, here's the thing. This is not easy. You may cry. It may really hurt. You may feel like you're out of control when you're finally revealing things to God that you really, you've been blocking inside of you. And when your life, when your world is so uncertain, here's what you have to understand. God is not. He's still got the whole world in his hands. And the greater that you grasp that, the greater that I grasp that, the more peace we'll have. God is in control. And what God wants to move in your life and in my life is he wants us to reveal what's really on our heart, what we're really struggling with. Because when we let go of those things, our faith increases. We understand how powerful God is. And we grasp more and more that God has it all. So why be anxious? Why be worried? And that's when we can really rejoice in the Lord. Father, we want to thank you so much for the hard times. We don't want them. We wish this would all end right now. But Lord, you continually reveal that the hard times is what brings us to our knees before you. And Lord, right now, there, there's some of us that are there. And we're really struggling. And it's hard to rejoice. It's hard to be happy. So Lord, I'm asking for your grace that you would help those who are really struggling to find a hope and a strength in you that can only be found in you. May they find that inner peace that comes from, from letting go and trusting in you. For some, they need to give their lives to Jesus Christ. They've never done that. Maybe they've grown up in a religion or maybe they've, they thought they could earn their way to your favor and to, to eternal life. And Lord, 
There's no way except through Jesus Christ. That's why he came. That's why he died. And so right now, may you give them the courage to make a decision to follow your son, Jesus Christ. That they may find that peace. Lord, there are others who are who are followers. They, they've been a follower for a long time. Maybe right now they're just saying, I, I need to come back. I haven't been following the way I should. And maybe right now is the time you're saying, look, I really want to commit my life to Christ again. I really want to, I want to get right. And I need this peace, especially right now. Lord, may this time we are going through as a world May it help us to seek you out like never before. May more people find faith in your son, Jesus Christ. May you use each one of us to share our faith, to share the hope that is in us, the eternal life that that we know we have because of Jesus Christ and that we want those we love to have as well. So Lord, we ask that you do incredible things. And may the peace that we have in Christ become more evident, not only in our own lives, but for the sake of those around us so that they can know that, Lord, you still, you still have the whole world in your hands. And so, Lord, we commit these things to you and we commit the situation that all of us are facing and we put it in your hands And we do this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. you're taking a lot out of this message uh every time i see the title of the series i think back to being a child and singing the psalm and it's really been helpful helpful for me i hope it's been helpful for you yeah this is uh this tough times are going through it really is but to but to know that god is god and he's in control and and the focus our joy is there that that's where we need to be. We really do. And even in the midst of hard times, and no matter how hard it gets, God loves and cares for us, and he's here right with us. Um, no closer than Mick is to me now. I mean, he's even closer because he's God, and that's awesome. So, hey, I hope you had a chance to connect with us, connect with others by interacting on our site. And if you would, just fill out the connection card. There's a way to click on there, and that's a great way to give us your prayer requests. Um, if you have any interest in giving to this ministry, we truly, truly appreciate it. And everything that happens here, all of this online ability is because of your gifts and your offerings. So you can either text or give through Secure Give, but your gifts matter and they're truly appreciated. So thank you. Thanks for being a part of this. Thanks for joining us online. 
and hopefully God will do amazing things in your life this week. And we'll see you next week.